I'm here at the TC3 Innovation Summit in Mountain View, California with Abhishek Shukla from GE Ventures. I was looking at your professional profile earlier, and boy, you have a massive job. Can you tell us a little bit about the specific areas that you look into for GE? Sure, yeah, so I, uh, uh, I'm a part of the software investing team at GE Ventures, and you know these days everything is software, so how do you define that? What I look at uh, is uh, specifically all the infrastructure software needs for GE and GE Ventures. That includes cybersecurity, that includes cloud infrastructure, uh, the entire I industrial IoT platform predicts what we are building, uh, so including from edge all the way back to uh, back to the cloud, and associated trends and technologies such as uh, you know all the AI models related to that blockchain, so on and so forth. So, but overall things which get used throughout GE as well. Okay, so if you were to encapsulate all of those sort of trends that you look at, you might say that those all drive digital transformation? Yes, absolutely. So digital transformation, and more so I would say business outcomes. We are in the business uh, with our customers to make their life easier, better, and, and you know safer, faster. Uh, you know, it's great to have an IoT platform, it's great to connect assets, but uh, you know, people or customers are only interested in if that improves their life. Yeah, I think that's a really uh, salient point that you bring up. I don't think any business owner or just manufacturing for a hypothetical, they don't wake up and say, I want to go buy me some IoT today. Exactly. They really, they need a, a solution that addresses a very specific problem. So as you exactly. as you look at your investment strategy, how do you start? Do you start with a technological evaluation or do you start with the business outcome that you're trying to achieve and then work backwards? Right, uh, I think it starts at what problem are you trying to solve? And, uh, you know, and I'm gonna grossly oversimplify this, but essentially, for example, if you take a windmill, uh, op wind farm operator, they are trying to, uh, increase the efficiency of how much power they can generate. They are not in the business of maintaining wind farm itself, but they want to increase efficiency. So can I really help them with that? Can I help the jet engine or the airline companies work with their jet engines uh, more efficiently because they are not in the business of maintaining or owning jet engines itself. They're in the business of moving people from one to the other. The commonality in all of this is these business outcomes on people looking for more efficiencies, trying to look at better outcomes for their bottom line or, or top line in some cases. Then my job is to, okay, how does that translate to, you know, uh, when, when, when you look under the hood, how does it work? Uh, on a, again, broader perspective, it's like, I'm gonna connect that asset. Connectivity happened along, um, you know, about 10 years ago for GE assets. Once you've connected those assets, there's a lot of data coming at you. So uh, the problem then is, okay, how do I an analyze a lot of this streaming data? How do I tag it? How do I map it? Just to make sure that it's gonna be useful for me because we all have, you know, grown up to the fact that you know, earlier it was big data, grab all the data, put it in a lake, and magic will happen. Well, guess what, magic never happened. So. Yeah, and that um, kind of circles back to something you mentioned that maybe we can talk a little more about, and that's uh, the idea of edge computing. And, yes. Uh, maybe fog, which I guess, I don't know, maybe the edge is a place and a fog is an architecture. Yeah. I'm not really sure what the the correct granulation is there, but what's your take on the role of edge computing going mm -hmm. forward as we see this massive proliferate, proliferation of the IoT endpoints and all of that data? It's just the, the cloud's not going to be enough, oh, right? absolutely. And we were in that, uh, we were of that mind um, a couple of years ago. Uh, so some of our investments, companies like Fog Hong, or companies like IOTM are essentially, uh, you know, helping us out in in that particular uh, journey. So the whole point was, our philosophy has been for many years, cloud is great. Not all my customer wants to move the data day one onto the cloud. Uh, given that connectivity is also not as ubiquitous as in the consumer world, like an aircraft engine in the flight or oil rig in the middle of nowhere in the ocean. Uh, that will that drives, you know, what happens to all this data which is now being generated. But sensifying everything, putting sensors all over the place, is is uh, is not as uh, uh, you know it it's a, you, you, it's it's a reasonably cost effective job these days. You can buy very low cost sensors. 
what do you do with all that data? That's when the edge becomes very important. So two pieces within edge are uh, have been uh, really uh, front and center for us. One, especially analytics piece. Uh, when I grab all this data coming from a jet engine, uh, how much of that data can I pipe it back to uh, Amazon Cloud? Uh, well, that's going to run me huge millions dollars right. worth of uh, uh, worth of bills. But the other hand, uh, other thing is, if I have to take an action on that, I can't do that immediately if I run it into the cloud and bring it back. Uh, what that means is a lot of those action needs to be local, needs to be done. Uh, bigger platforms, that's fine, but if you take that compute all the way and reduce it to like a Raspberry Pi or even smaller, that's where the challenge is. How do you r run uh, great analytic models, uh, even new some, some new machine learning models into a, uh, in, into a compute platform which is Raspberry Pi? That's where some of our investments have been. The second piece of this edge uh, has been, you know, connectivity and, and connecting all these assets will happen. Uh, the scale is already massive. It's going to just enhance from here. Now, all these things are connected and are available to you and me physically to go up to the light and see what's going on. Uh, therein lies the danger of, you know, somebody hacking into the system. So it's not a question of if this will ever get hacked, it's a question of when it will get hacked. And the challenge then becomes, you know, uh, to the, take the Equifax uh, challenge, which happened a couple of weeks back, it was really bad, but nobody lost their life. In this scenario, you know, imagine an aircraft engine, no God forbid, never, it ever happens, but any of these critical assets have a hacking issue, that's the outcome you are dealing with life. So security is, we are paranoid about security at the edge as well. So these two things combined then, uh, you know, informs our decision on what happens at the edge and eventually what decisions are made into the cloud. Okay, and I saw you uh, earlier, you were up on the spotlight stage there at TC3. So maybe as we wrap up, you can give us a, a snapshot of what you were discussing today and then maybe tell me what you think you might be discussing on that same stage five years from now. Yeah. Yeah. So today we talked about a lot of, you know, people want to understand the new buzzwords. Hey, how, how can I use AI in IoT? How can I use blockchain in IoT? And, you know, my, my perspective in that, uh, in that conversation was I get a lot of pitches which are about, hey, I'm an AI company or I'm a blockchain company. And, you know, I st at that point start doodling on my notebook. It's essentially always about tell me the problem which you're solving. Maybe blockchain is a good answer to use it, maybe not, but as long as you are very clear on what problem you're solving, that's how I start looking at some of those uh, pitches. Uh, and then coming to your second question, which is what happens five years from now, well, that's a, that's a really tough one. Uh, I think a lot of, uh, you know, IoT itself and then industrial IoT is still, with all what has happened, is still is infancy. Uh, a lot of the customers which we have, a lot of, uh, uh, are still looking at the fact, how is this going to improve my life? So five years from now, this will be, I think it will be broadly adopted. People will be assuming that a lot of these decisions are being made by the machines in a normal life. Uh, some of these technologies which we keep talking about, AI and, 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 and blockchain, are going to be the, uh, the technologies on which many solutions will be built. But especially in an in industrial world, uh, the value will be gained if you are not if you're not selling a technology to me but essentially a business outcome uh, because that's what i signed up for my customers for excellent well abhishek i really appreciate you taking a moment to share your perspective thank you very much i appreciate the time thank, thank you, you.